Hello, and welcome to my first TBR of January 2021. I have a very large stack of books that I'll explain. I've also got a new and improved Jenga TBR game that I'll explain. Um, and lots of fun things to talk about. So here we go. Um, in 2022, I have several things that I'm going to be focusing on. So the first thing is my own year-long reading challenge. Um, read along, I guess. And that is my Beans Big Book Bash. There should be a video already up about the first pick for Beans Big Book Bash, which of course is The Count of Monte Cristo for the month of January. The goal is to read this beautiful book um, in the month of January and get it off my TBR shelf. So first book on my January TBR is Beans Big Book Bash pick, The Count of Monte Cristo. Then I am also this year, going to be reading one Miss Marple a month and all the short stories. So that should put us at 13 books, which means one book a month and then the short story is scattered throughout the year. Um, and so the first book is The Murder at the Vicarage. And I'm excited to read this one. I'm excited to spend some time with Agatha Christie each month. I've never read the Miss Marple books. I've only ever read two Agatha Christie's. Um, one was a Poirot, one was a standalone, um, and so I am excited to read this one. No, that's not true. I've read three. I read two Poirot because I read, I keep forgetting that I read Murder on the Orient Express as a read aloud for my kids. I also read The Mysterious Fair at Styles, and I have read Crooked House. By the end of 2022, I will have read the whole Miss Marple series. That is exciting. I'm also doing the Read Harder Challenge. I will be reading two prompts worth of books for the Read Harder Challenge each month. Um, I have ordered those two books, but they've not arrived yet. And so I'll put pictures of them here. I will be reading for a biography of an author that I am interested in or that I respect. I will be reading The Duchess of Death about Agatha Christie. And then for a book set in a bookshop, I will be reading Yellow Lighted Bookshop, which is a memoir about, I assume, a bookshop. <laughs> then, if you saw my birthday book haul, you know that I am also going to reread 12 of what I think are my favorite books this year. And the book that was picked for January for me was This Present Darkness by Frank Peretti. So, that is my reread for the month of January. It's going on my TBR. Additionally, I will be reading from the 52 award-winning titles every book lover should read, a one-year journal and recommended reading list from the American Library Association. So there are some books in here that I have already read, and I will not be rereading them, but it's just a handful. So it works out to four to three or four books per month. Um, I have ordered the three books that I will be reading this month out of the 52 award winning titles suggested by ALA, the American Library Association. Um, but they have not arrived yet. I ordered them all secondhand, and I'm excited to read them. The first one uh, is The Lost Memory of Skin. I know nothing about it. The next is The Girl Who Drank the Moon, which, of course, is a booktube favorite. I haven't read it. It's going up on my stack. And The Line Becomes a River, which I know nothing about but I have them coming to me from Better World Books, um, and I am excited to add them to my TBR. Additionally, I, every month, have a book group read, and my In Real Life book group this year, this year, <laughs> maybe it'll take a year, this month is reading um, Amortol's The Lincoln Highway. 
So this is by the same author as Rules of Civility, which I loved, and The Gentleman of Moscow, which I detested. I haven't started reading this one yet, so I don't know where it's going to fall for me, but it's going on my TBR for the month of January. Additionally, each month, I will be reading one of Shakespeare's comedies. So in 2020, I joined a group and we read, there were hundreds of us, and we read all of Shakespeare in 2020. All of them. All. All. Have I said all? <laughs> we read all of Shakespeare. This time, we're just going to read the comedies, and I am very excited to rejoin uh, a group of people from that core or a core group of people from that larger group once again. And so we're starting with, there's no rhyme or reason to this. I think the schedule puts Midsummer Night's Dream in Midsummer, and other than that, everything else is just whatever. Um, and the general consensus was, we just wanna get the two gentlemen of Verona out of the way. So that is the one that we are starting with. I actually didn't hate the two gentlemen of Verona like everybody else did. Um, they thought that, it, I mean, I just think of it like a Laurel and Hardy. That's what it's like. It's like a Laurel and Hardy or a Three Stooges. If you can tap into that and find enjoyment in it, you can find enjoyment in this. Then I read a book called Praying with Jane Eyre last month in November and December. It was a, it was a November read for nonfiction November, but it rolled over into December. I finished it in December. And in that book, it talks about, it's a memoir. It's the author's memoir. Um, Sultan, I think her last name is. Um, she is a, an atheist Jewish chaplain um, with a divinity degree from Harvard. And being an atheist, she was finding it difficult to find um, guidance in religious scripture. So she asked her professors if she could use Jane Eyre instead. And so her book, although it is a memoir, it also explores the idea of making literature and other things, but in her case, literature, sacred and how things are sacred, not because of an innate sacredness to them, but because of the meaning that we put upon them and into them. Now, I, I want to try that. I am a Christian. The Bible is still my authority, but, but I like this idea of seeing what things that we are innately drawn to can teach us. And so kind of in a devotional sort of way, I'm not making a religion, please don't think I'm making a religion, but in a devotional sort of way, I would like to read one of my favorite books of all time, Anne of Green Gables, every month for the next 12 months. We'll see how that goes. Um, I got I, I got this new copy of it specifically for this project for this year, and I will each month annotate it. I'm a writer in the book, not a tabber. Um, I will annotate it with a different color each month and see what it reveals to me. The I'm not only drawn to do this because of the Jane Eyre book, because of Praying with Jane Eyre. I'm actually drawn to this because I used to teach The Great Gatsby and um, Catcher in the Rye and other books, Wit, a play, Doubt, a play. Um, I used to teach them repeatedly and read them five to six times a year for half a decade because I was teaching them to high schoolers. Yeah, I would like to try it because I, I know that those books became incredibly important to me. And in fact, I have said before that the things we carried feels like a sacred text. And that's one of the books that I, I did that process with. So I want to know what is it in Anne of Green Gables that I can truly learn um, from Anne of Green Gables, not from Ella Montgomery's life or from literary criticism that may or may not be written about the book, but from Anne, the book itself. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to do that. We'll see if I do that. We'll see if I do that. So January, you'll see this every month, hopefully. Then um, if you saw my birthday book haul, you know that I got a lot of books for myself and I have made a plan so that I will be reading them all this year. And I've broken them up, piled them up and uh, decided which months that I would be reading two to four of them in each month. So in January, 
I'm going to read these two. Um, and something happened with my birthday book haul in which I accidentally deleted an entire clip. So you actually don't know about, I think, six books <laughs> that were on that already very substantial <laughs> stack of books I got for myself for my birthday. I did talk about them for the video, um, but then for whatever reason, they I accidentally deleted that clip and I didn't catch it. The first book that I'm going to show you is a book that you don't know that was on that stack, influenced by Ivy's library card and her read of this book. I was intrigued by it and decided to pick it up. Shout of life and individuality, an act of defiance that gladdens the soul. I thought what a better way to start January than with Lolly Willows by Sylvia Townsend Warner. I don't know. I don't know anything else about it. And so I'm, I would just like to read it. It sounds uplifting and I'd like to start the year that way. The other book from my birthday book haul you will recognize I'm going to start with The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. A little beacon of pleasure, says Kate Atkinson. So I'm excited to read that one. Now, all of that being said, um, although I'd like to read less than I read before uh, in the last two years, I read less last year than I read in 2020, but it still was an awful lot. I would like to read less in 2022 than I read in 2021, but I still am going to read an awful lot. I mean, I think it's just who I am. I'm going to also play the Jenga game that I invented. I won't play this, well, that I, that I invented. I'm so amazing. The Jenga game that I adapted and then saw that other people had also adapted in different ways from me. I have a Jenga TBR game and I will be playing that um, most months, but in March, I will do middle grade March and I'll curate an actual list. In August or September, I will do a librarian picks my TBR and that will be curated for me. Um, in July, I will do Jane Austen July and I'll curate a TBR. In October, I'll do Victober and I'll curate a TBR. And in November, I will do both Nonfiction November and the Blue Moon Readathon if the Blue Moon Readathon happens again. Uh, I absolutely loved that. So much fun. Thank you, Allie V and your partner for uh, coming up with that. And I hope that it continues. I will curate TBRs without Jenga. But the rest of the months, I'm gonna be better about playing Jenga. And I'm also going to be better about not just jumping on every single readathon that comes out. I will be picking, um, I will be picking enough books to finish out a TBR uh, of 25 books. 25, you say? Well, I mean, let's be realistic. I, last year I read about and created TBRs for about uh, 30 to 40 books per month. And there were a couple of months when I read less than that, but for the most part, that's what I was reading. So I am going to pick 25 books and, um, and that's what I'm going to read each month. I'm not actually going to allow myself to read more than 25 books. What a weird thing for a booktuber to say. I'm putting a cap on how many books I can read. There's a couple of reasons why I want to do that. One, I'm also a writer and I have done less writing in the last two years than I have probably in the last decade combined. And part of that is because I'm giving all my time to reading. And part of that is because it is so much easier to consume than create. So the time that I will have left after reading 25 books each month, uh, I will dedicate to writing. Additionally, this should help me to meet my desire to slow down the speed with which I am reading. Um, and so those two things are two of my goals, to write more, and to read slower. And so hopefully that will help. Of course, not included in this is all the books that I have to read for my master's courses. I read them in a very different way than I read for booktube. And I might do reviews of them, but if I do, it, they'll be prefaced with the caveat that I read these and analyzed them for school. Um, there are a couple of books that I'm not going to leave to chance um, and Jenga TBR 
game that I want to read in January. So let me grab those. Okay, I don't want to leave these to chance. Um, the other thing that I want to say is not in January, but in February, I will include in my 25 book TBR all of the books that come in as pre-orders in January. So in February, I'll read January's pre-orders. In March, I'll read February's pre-orders, etc, etc. That way those pre-orders don't just stack up. It means that some months I won't have a lot of, of Jenga tiles to pull uh, because in April, I think all the slots are filled with all the March books that are coming in. But March is my biggest month of pre-orders. So um, also I have no pre-orders pre-ordered uh, coming in after August. So currently September is the last month that I have pre-orders built into the TBR. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense to me. You don't have to know. You don't have to understand. There are two books that I want to work into my TBR for this month that are not, that I don't want to leave to chance. One, they're both nonfiction. One is Tom Reese's The Black Count, The Glory, Revolution, Betrayal, and The Real Count of Monte Cristo. I think that it's obvious why I would like to read this one in January to accompany my Beans Big Book Bash book pick. That was hard to say of The Count of Monte Cristo. So I would like to read that one. So that's going straight on the TBR. And then uh, I would like to read this one, which was recommended to me by Aaron at Aaron Go Read. Uh, this is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And I thought what a better way to start the year out than by being very mindful about habits I'd like to begin and habits I would like to end. That means that I have 10 open spaces. So I have to play Jenga. Jenga is very much the same. It's the same game, but I have done something different with it. Um, so there are no more blank tiles. If you've watched me play a round of TBR Jenga on my channel, you know that I used to have some that had genres written on them and some that were blank. And that I thought would create tension because if I kept pulling blank tiles, I couldn't make book choices and the tower would get taller. And if the tower toppled, then I was going to have to repick my entire TBR pile that I had already just picked. It never toppled. <laughs> there was no tension. So, and, and it was time consuming and a little bit frustrating. So I have actually altered what I have on here. I have a couple of genre tiles, but mostly I got rid of the genre tiles. And I replaced them instead with letters of the alphabet. So some of these Jenga tiles have letters of the alphabet, in which case I will have to pick a book that either starts with that letter, articles excluded, like the, a, and an don't count as beginning title words. I think that I have each letter represented at least twice. Sometimes I have an, a multiple letter tile like NOP, in which case I just have more choice. I can pick a book that starts, the title starts with that letter, or I can pick a book that the author starts with that letter. It just has to be connected to that letter in some way, shape or form. I also have some prompts, but I've changed them a lot. So for example, it's really hard to read, but that says plus cover. So that would be if I pull that one, I have to pick a book with a cover that I really like. Um, I have a couple in here that are free pick. I have one that is a cover I don't like a minus cover older book I have a book that has a number I have a nonfiction I have a fiction a middle grade a YA poetry I have chosen to write newest but I'm gonna say newer since most of my newest books are already worked on to my TBR a play or a drama and then I have number 70 on the shelf we'll always refer to my fiction shelf which the books should be moving around because, well, my TBR fiction shelf, which the books should be shuffling around because I should be reading quite a few of them throughout the months. And so they should be shuffling and I should be able to find number 70 and it should be different every month. All right, here we go. I need to pick 10 books.
<laughs> starting out strong. I have to pick a book that starts with the letter Q. I'm going to pick the Queen of Hearts. The letter N. Never alone. Choose a YA. I'm going to go with truly devious. Truly devious. A Z, an X, or a Y. So I'm going with Z. And I'm going with the author's last name. This is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Of course, I have heard so much about this, but I know nothing about it. I got it in a gift box last year, well, in 2020. I'm going to go with a tail for the time being. In. Let's see, for M, Jean M. All and read the clan of the cave bear. And for the YA, I'm gonna put Truly Devious back and I'm gonna replace it with Storm of Echoes, which has been on my TBR three months in a row. Or this will be the third month. I haven't gotten to it yet. And I really want to. Um, so I'm gonna, that's my YA pick for more. E. I'm gonna go with E. Eric Emanuel Schmidt. Uh, the most beautiful book in the world. One of my newer books. Go with Winter Solstice by Rosemond Culture. Free choice. I'm going to go with a bound heart for my free choice. L, the letter L. I can't see that. So many big books, but I'm gonna go with Light a Penny Candle. I may have only been able to pick 25 books, but I very well may have dug my own grave. <laughs> um, And keep in mind, please, that there are five of them that are missing. <laughs> um, so we'll have to see how this goes. I mean, I think I can do it. We'll see. Let's just go over them one more time. So uh, the five that are not physically present with me at the moment are The Duchess of Death and the Yellow Lighted Gift Shop, 
the lost meaning of skin, the girl who drank the moon, and the line becomes a river. I also have the audiobook from my library of three of these. So that will make that a lot faster and easier. So those are the five that are not physically in my presence at the moment, but I also have, and I'll go through them quickly, The Lincoln Highway, Anne of Green Gable, Two Gentlemen of, of Verona, This Present Darkness, The Murder at the Vicarage, The Count of Monte Cristo, The Thursday Murder Club, Lolly Willows, Tale for the Time Being, Shadow of the Wind, Never Alone. Oh, oh, The Queen of Hearts. Oh no, Q. Never mind. The Queen of Hearts, The Clan of the Cave Bear, A Storm of Echoes, Atomic Habits, which I also have the audiobook for. Black Count, which I also have the audiobook for. Light a Penny Candle, which I will get the, the audiobook for. But it's not, it's not that bad. It looks big, but it's not that bad. A Bound Heart. Winter Solstice, which I also have the audiobook for. And the most beautiful book in the world. I also have an audiobook for The Count of Monte Cristo, which I will not listen to without also reading the book in front of me. Um, but the others I can go back and forth between reading and listening to them. And so that way I will finish them fairly, fairly quickly. That's a lot of books. And that's a lot. I mean, it's more, it's not that many books for me. That's a lot of pages. A lot of pages. It's January. We'll see how it goes. I am very excited about all of these. Extremely excited about all of these. I cannot wait to have read all of these. There isn't one among them that I am that I am doubtful of or fearful of. It's just the sheer amount of pages. Anyway, thanks for watching my first TBR um, of the year for meeting my brand new Jenga experience for listening to all of my reading plans for January of 2022 and beyond. Tune in for a couple of updates about The Count of Monte Cristo um, as the month progresses and also for the wrap up to see, did I really only read 25 books? Did I read these 25 books? Was in this instance 25 too many? <laughs> we'll find out. Your guess is as good as mine. Um, see you later.